common belief on Capitol Hill that the best way to raise money from Congress is to scare them. Walter Isaacson, the head of a government agency that manages U.S. international broadcasting, apparently wants a lot of money. The cause? To fight America's enemies in the media, which he identifies as Iran, Venezuela, Russia and China. We can't allow ourselves to be outcommunicated by our enemies. There's that Freedom House report that reveals that today's autocratic leaders are investing billions of dollars in media resources to influence the uh, global opinion. You got Russia today, Iran's Press TV, Venezuela's Telesaur, and of course China is uh, launching international broadcasting 24-hour news channels with correspondents around the world. Spent reportedly set aside six to ten billion dollars. We got to go to Capitol Hill with that number to expand their overseas media operations. To many, it sounded like a declaration of information war, but later, Mr. Isaacson backtracked. I don't think of Russia or RT as an enemy, and certainly did not mean to imply that they're an enemy. So that's just not right. Maybe Mr. Isaacson really did not mean to offend Russia or China. It's all a pitch for more money from Congress, which he's trying to kind of appeal to by saying that other countries are spending more on international communications. Fear is really the buzzword that's used to try to generate money for the Defense Department, the CIA, intelligence agencies, and now for international broadcasting. But getting the U.S. message across is costly. The agency that Mr. Walter Isaacson is heading is called Broadcasting Board of Governors. It includes radio stations, Voice of America, one of them, and a fairly unpopular Middle Eastern TV channel. On all this, the board spends more than $750 million, and it's way more than the budget of RT, Iran's Press TV, and Venezuela's Telesur combined. So maybe money does not really make up for global media clout. Mr. Isaacson says that it's truthfulness that will make the difference. And in the end, the truth is on our side. And it's that statement that raised an alert with some freedom of speech advocates. Somebody who says that the truth is always on the United States side is a propagandist and not a uh, journalist. And I think that's bad. It sets a bad example for other countries um, when, that, when they say that, because obviously other countries have their perspectives. Uh, many times, U.S. media is uh, slanted toward uh, the United States, even the private media. The credibility of the Broadcasting Board of Governors was under even more scrutiny when reports came out about the White House influence on the BBG reporting after Iranian presidential election. And some experts say American broadcasters that once used to be a powerful voice in the international media are now facing a crisis. The problem that they are facing is that the message they have about how the world is supposed to work is not resonating. It's not uh, getting traction. Seems Washington is still getting used to the increasing volume from media voices giving a fresh perspective on world issues. Can you check on RT, Washington, D.C.? Well, now to some other world news in brief for you at this uh,